Huh? We in Milwaukee a lot. Really yeah, know. we're in Milwaukee a lot right now because Milwaukee has a lot of stuff going on. Doc Rivers versus J.J. Reddick. Yeah, Doc Rivers versus J.J. Reddick versus Austin Rivers versus Pat Beverly. J.J. Reddick went scorched earth on Doc Rivers on first take earlier this week. Where did that come from? He just, well, he just went scorched earth because he wasn't even asked. He basically said that this guy, all he does is he has no account. He says Doc Rivers has no accountability. He's never his fault. And blah, 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 blah. He played for Doc Rivers for four or five years. He had the best stretch of his career playing for Doc Rivers. Then Austin Rivers comes from behind and says and defends his dad and all that. And they both went to Duke, so they have that Duke brotherhood, whatever the hell crap they got going on there. And then Pat Beverly jumps in and says, how the hell are you talking about your coach who you had your best years with? And then and then J.J. Reddick comes back and says, you know, he saved your career. He's like, fuck out of here to save my career. I had a four-year deal with a player option for the same money to start somewhere else. So he's like, fuck out of here. J.J. Reddick went scorched earth. Do you think it's a personal situation? It's definitely a personal situation. The man, he lit him up. And I didn't know where that came from because I'm thinking like, damn, J.J., he 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 messes with him, man. I'm thinking like, damn, they had a good, a good thing together because Doc obviously ran his offense through J.J. because he's a shooter. He comes off screens. You have to run your offense through him. You get slip screens off him. You can use him. But J.J. not just out there getting his own buckets. So I'm like, damn. Doc actually, I, when I used to watch the Clippers, I was like, damn. The whole offense run through J.J., you know, down screens, all these things. What's the problem here? He, I don't care what J.J. said. Doc made his career. Doc, Doc made his career. J.J. in Orlando was okay. You know, he got another. He went to Milwaukee. He did a couple other things, but we weren't looking at J.J. in the light that we looked at him in Clippers. Like, when we got to the Clippers, he was a serious threat. We we respected his game because he played with good players, and also Doc was a coach that got him open or found ways to get him the ball in great ways to score. score. It was unfortunate that they didn't win a championship. They had chances. They had, you know, the, the – the right team to get it done. Injuries messed them up, and I think that's that's the only thing I could think about. I don't know what was deeper than than that. JJ has to tell us something that we obviously don't know. I would love to know the truth about this situation because there's something that he that he smashed JJ's wife or something. I don't know because we know that stuff goes on in the NBA where the players are banging coaches' wives and why player and coaches are banging players' wives and who the hell knows what's going on in the NBA, but. I, I, I listened to that, and, and then J.J., you know, I have no problem with what he said. It's his opinion. I mean, that's his belief. And there is video after video after video after video showing all the nonstop excuses that Doc Rivers has made over his career. So that could be a, a form of accountability. Now, but he suffers from but – but he's – always been accountable in the fact that he's been fired three times. So if that's not accountability, I don't know what is. It's responsibility at least. Now, if you sit here and say, yeah, you know, we didn't get back on defense. Well, yeah, that's accountability. I mean, what, what is he supposed to sprint back on defense for them? When they lost to the, to the, to the G League Memphis Grizzlies, was that really Doc Rivers' fault? Like, how do you blame the coach because – because you know, in the NBA, coaching matters not about that much. It's really about your players playing, competing, and, and putting the ball in the hole and playing hard. If you don't, now look, there are plays you can, things and things you can scheme and devise. That's fine. But Milwaukee should never have lost to that Memphis team. And when, you, when you're talking about accountability, like, I mean, he's been fired. Now, he made excuses early on, say, why'd you hire me? And I think he's kind of in jest saying that because, realistically, I think he was kind of slimy for even taking this job because he looks like a slime ball for having basically – you're the mentor, the consultant, the coach that just got fired and they hired you. So wouldn't you attribute the consulting that this guy had to Doc? That doesn't make sense. Now, I will say this. Defensive, defensive efficiency for the Bucks in the 10 games has gone up to 10th in the league. So he's improved their defense almost immediately. 
Problem is, their offensive efficiency has gone from like first or second to like 30th <laughs> in that same space. It's gone to the bottom third. So they're not scoring now. So they were def- before they're scoring, not defending. Now they're not scoring and they're defending. So it's like, it, it's a problem in Milwaukee. And I think this is Doc Rivers' last job. If he doesn't win, he will be gone in the next, not the end of this season, but the season after, he'll be out of there. Um, yeah, uh, I I agree with Austin Rivers. I don't necessarily agree with Pat Beverly saying he made his career because if he had a job offer for four years and in 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 a, in a player option to start, he didn't save his career. He may have had the best years of his career there, but I don't know that he saved his career. But – you know, that, I, I, I look forward to seeing if J.J. ever tells us the truth because Doc will never tell us the truth as to what happened. 